Okay, so uh, good morning. Um, so I want to continue with uh, uh, these, uh, this introduction to stochastic models in population genetics. And I've sort of written down here sort of four uh, important um, concepts which are sometimes called evolutionary forces. These are, of course, not forces in the, in the sense of physical forces, but they are the mechanisms that shape the genetic uh, diversity in a population, and this is what evolution essentially is. So the way we think about evolution in terms of population genetics is in terms of changing gene frequencies in populations, which eventually lead to the adaptation. And there are these uh, four processes. So mutation, which we haven't talked about yet much, is, is uh, the, the, the process which creates uh, new variants. Selection, that we also haven't talked much about, is um, is then uh, the, the, the fact that certain, com certain genes are better adapted than others and therefore increase in frequency, as we'll see in a minute. Drift, we have talked about. Drift is, the, is a stochasticity that comes about because the population is finite. And finally, there is a force of recombination, which I actually will not cover at all in these lectures, but which, of course, is also important in particular when dealing with, uh, with uh, sexually reproducing organisms. So, so let me, so, so basically, you know, all that we have covered of this list uh, so far is more or less the process of drift. And today I want to talk in particular about mutation and selection. Um, so let me remind you of where we were yesterday. So we were looking at the right fisher model. Um, we considered uh, two types of equal fitness. Okay, so this is the neutral uh, case. Um, and the, the picture that, that uh, we arrived at then was the following. So basically, we have uh, the, the, the variable of interest is the number of individuals of one of the types, right? So this is N, N A, which I for simplicity simply call uh, small n, and this varies between 0 and n. So you have this thing here. And uh, the right fisher process describes how um, from one generation to the next uh, this changes, right? So you go from, from some initial n to some final n according to this transition probability t of n prime given n. Um, and, and one of the things that I uh, told you yesterday and that you also uh, were looking at in, 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 the, in the problem uh, is that, so, so important facts about this model is, are that um, it has absorbing states, right? So we have absorbing states at zero and at, at n. So here the um, A-type goes extinct and here the A-type fixes, right? Um, and uh, what I told you from the simple calculation of the heterozygosity was that, that the time scale to fixation in this neutral case is of order n, okay? And, and this, uh, uh, obviously, this created the question from Satya and, and others uh, because this is essentially something like a diffusion process. And so you would expect that the diffusion process the, the time for the diffusion process to reach about the boundary of an interval of size L should be L squared and not L. So why is it N here? The reason is that this thing here um, is, uh, is um, I can write it down again for you. So this is equal to um, <coughs> uh, so this is sort of the formula that you uh, remember from yesterday. And so let's, uh, let's consider, for example, the case that we start exactly in the middle of the interval, right? So let's start at n equal to n over 2. So we start with exactly equal numbers of, of a and b individuals. Then this thing here will simply be 2 to the minus n. And so you see what this is is simply the binomial distribution, right? So, so basically this is a binomial coefficient. And so um, this is the distribution of n prime given n. So it's the, 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 the distribution of where you will jump if you start at, at n over 2, okay? So what, is, what does this distribution look like for large n? This is something that you should have learned from Sanjeev's lecture yesterday. It's a Gaussian, right? So this will become a Gaussian 
um, of width um, square root of n according to the central limit theorem. So this means that this jump length here typically is of order square root of n. Okay, so the number, so, so the 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 um, uh, uh, the change in the in the size of the of the of the a clone in one generation is typically square root of n, and so the way you can see this, you know, you, you, the way you can sort of understand the scaling, is that this is equal to um, the square of the of the size of the interval divided by the square of the let me call this delta n, so the square of the jump length, right? which is square root of n and therefore it's n. Okay, so this is why, where this, this, uh, this n scaling comes from. So we have here a state dependent diffusion process because uh, the jump rates depend on where you are um, uh, and it, 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 it uh, performs sort of long range jumps which are typically of order square root of n. Okay, is that clear? Okay. Now, what I, what I want to do now is to introduce um, a bias into this process. So I want to treat, treat selection. So selection means that one of the types is favored compared to the other. And in this picture, in this picture of this sort of state dependent diffusion process, this means that there should be some sort of a bias, right? So selection will, will tend to push uh, this diffusing particle in one direction. So if the A type is favored, there will be a bias to the right. So this you can in principle introduce into the right fisher model, but as I told you yesterday, this becomes uh, somewhat untractable because of these long range jumps. So therefore I will introduce a, a, a variant of this model and it's pretty clear what one has to do. What we want is to keep these jumps local, right? So we want to make sure that this um, variable only changes by plus minus one. And this is exactly what is achieved in the uh, so-called Moran model, which is sort of the second uh, workhorse in um, theoretical population genetics. So this is now what I want to discuss. Um, and uh, so what do we do? So we have again n individuals. And they ha are assigned some fitness values. Um, and uh, the time step, one time step, which is now not really a generation. So, so in the Moran model, the individual time steps are individual reproduction events. So one time step uh, consists of the following. Um, you pick an individual. And, and replicate it. So this is a reproduction step. Okay. Um, pick individual and the I with probability that is proportional to its fitness, which is this. Okay, and, and replicate it. So, so this means you now have one individual more, right? So you have a child. So n now goes to n plus one. And now to keep the, the population size constant, you kill a randomly chosen individual. So kill a randomly chosen. So randomly meaning without regard to fitness. Okay. So now one, so, so obviously, you know, on average, you would need n of these steps to, to replicate the entire population. And we'll see that, you know, essentially by this mechanism, there's sort of a change of time scale between this model and the right Fisher model, which is just a factor of n. Okay. Uh, and, and again, we want to, we want to specialize this to two types. Um, with fitness um, A and with fitness WA and WB. Um, 
And, and uh, let's say, so I will introduce, I think I wrote this down already yesterday, so the so-called selection coefficient in this um, context is defined as um, S, or one possible way. There are sort of many ways of doing this, but one way that is useful here is to say this is the WA minus uh, over WB minus one, okay? So when WA is greater than uh, 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 WB, so S positive means that the A type is favored or fitter. Okay, but, but in principle, I mean, the analysis will work for positive or negative S, okay? So now, so this is again now a um, Markov chain on the same state space, except that now in one uh, time step, uh, the, the, the size of the A population cannot change by more than one, right? So there are essentially uh, three possibilities. Um, you can pick an A individual and replicate it and kill a B individual, then the A clone grows by one. You can pick a B individual and kill an A individual, and then uh, the, the, the A clone shrinks by one. Or you can, you can kill and, and uh, uh, replicate an individual of the same type, and then the process doesn't change, okay? So now we just have to write down the, the, the rates for that. Um, so what are the transition rates? And, and for that, so here it will be important, so we need the, 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 the mean fitness, so the mean fitness of the population in this case is simply 1 over n times n times the A fitness plus capital N minus small n times the B fitness, all right? So this is sort of the average fitness, and of course it's state dependent, this is sort of uh, This mean fitness depends, of course, on the composition of the um, population. Okay, so now we can write down the, the transition rates. As I said, there are only three possibilities. So one is that uh, n increases by one. Now what, what, does, what do we have to do for that? So we have to pick some A individual. So this will happen with a probability that is equal to this probability times the number of A individuals. Okay, so this is a probability of picking an A individual uh, with, with, with regard to fitness. So this is, uh, you know, the probability of picking an A individual uh, for replication. Um, so A replicates. And then, I have to pick a B individual for dying, but the, the, the picking of the B individual happens without regard to, to its fitness, right? So the probability for that will just be the number of B individuals divided by the total number, right? So the, so the fitness only enters here, okay? So B is killed. Okay, is that clear? Okay, and then the other step is, of course, um, analogous. So here we just have to do WB times N divided by W bar N. Uh, sorry, here we have to put, this is sort of the, this is the probability of choosing a B individual for replication and choosing an A individual for death. And then the, the, the third one, you can write down analogously, but of course you can also just invoke normalization because obviously the process has to go somewhere in one time step. So this is just equal to one minus the sum of the other two rates. Okay. Yep. Should there be n plus 
by one, and then you can randomly choose and zero, and you ask for the uh, No, okay, I mean, you don't, I guess you don't actually, I mean, this is a, a detail, but I think you don't actually include the newly born in that selection step. You, 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 it's sort of in one, you do that at once, right? So you just pick from the old, old population, you pick the B individual, so you don't, you don't count this, this child when you, when you do that step. I think you could do that, it's actually a good point, but, but I think this is not how it's usually done, okay? Yeah, 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 of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, right, so now we have this, uh, this process. Um, so what do we now, what do we, what do, we do with it? Um, and as I said, what we, what we primarily want to calculate is um, the fixation probability of the A-type, okay? And, and uh, as we saw already in the neutral case, so here we saw that the fixation probability um, was equal to, uh, to, to small n over capital N. Okay, maybe I'll just write it down here again, so recall. And this, this will be true here as well. So that just relied on this martingale property, which this model also has, of course. So we recall in the neutral case, The fixation probability starting from from n a individuals and I call this pi n now it's equal to small n over capital N right so this was what we found yesterday this is just a consequence of this Martingale property, and this will be true here as well. Now we want to know uh, how this changes by selection. Okay, so what is um, what is pi n in the presence of selection? And this one can, one can figure out by writing down a recursion, okay? So, so the idea is the following. So, um, <clears throat> so, so, so let, let's look at, um, at um, a certain uh, time step. Okay, so let's, um, <clears throat> um, let, 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 let me consider the, the, the um, process um, at time t. And, you know, pi n is, is, is something at that particular, you know, from that time on, I'm, 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 I'm sitting in state n, and uh, my, my fixation probability is pi n, okay? And now I do one time step forward in time. So I, I evolve the system uh, forward in time. And what can happen in the next time step? So there are, there are these three possibilities. So either I increase n, and then I have to go to fixation from this increased population size, right? So I increase, and then from there on I have to fix, or I decrease the population, and then I have to go um, to fixation from the, the smaller value of n, or I stay where I am, and then I just have to write uh, pi n again, right? So this is sort of, I'm basically looking one time step forward in time, and I'm writing down this consistency relation, which is that the, 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 the fixation probability from the previous time step to the, to the final time step has to be the same, right? So this is at time t plus one. Because the fixation probability, of course, is a quantity that is always referred to, uh, you know, refers to, to the um, long time limit. So now we have a recursion. Right, um, and uh, this recursion we have to solve. Now, one thing um, that we observe is that uh, because there is um, normalization, these rates are normalized, 
which essentially um, uh, uh, expresses conservation of probability. This is what I said before. This is basically what leads to this relation, the fact that you, know, you have to go somewhere from your initial state. So, so conservation of probability means that the sum of these rates is simply equal to 1. And so if you look at this recursion, you see that if you set, um, uh, if you set pi n to a constant, then this, this recursion will always be solved. Right? So if you just, just say pi n is a constant, then uh, you know, this will just be equal to 1, and the, 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 this will be the solution. Now, why isn't that a good solution? Okay, so we note that recursion is solved Why isn't this a good solution? Apart from the fact that it's, it could be any constant, so we don't actually learn anything about pi n. Um, so what is, what, what, is, um, what is pi zero? If I start with zero a individuals, what is then the fixation probability? Zero, right? What if I start with capital NA individuals? It's one, right? So, so we have boundary conditions, right? So we have to solve this recursion with boundary conditions. And therefore, this constant solution is, of course, no good. Boundary conditions. And I'm sort of emphasizing this because later in the context of the diffusion theory, we'll have a similar structure. So, you know, so we have to solve this recursion and we have to uh, satisfy these boundary conditions. Now, um, taking my cue from Sanjib yesterday, I will leave the so solution of the recursion to you as an exercise, okay? <laughs> it's actually not very hard, but you know, you, you have to play with these, uh, with these rates. Uh, a hint is that this normalization factor, which looks a little bit ugly because it's actually sort of causes some nonlinearity, this normalization factor actually drops out of the recursion, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we can solve this, rela this recursion, and what is the solution? So let me write it down. Uh, so maybe we write it here, exercise, find the solution. So I'm writing it now in terms of this selection coefficient. Um, and this is valid for positive or for negative s. And this actually has already quite a bit of, of uh, content. Um, so let me, let me discuss some limits. And so first of all, let me sort of yeah, okay, let, let's, let's discuss some limits, and um, let's maybe focus on the case where, um, where the, um, no, let, let, let's, let's look at, 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 uh, at limits, okay, so limit. So one limit is, of course, that we have to recover, we can take s to zero, Right, and so for s to zero, you have to do a little bit of work because this is, you know, both uh, um, upper and lower part sort of vanishes. But what you can easily convince yourself is that we recover the neutral uh, result as it should be. Um, another interesting limit is if we have s positive and we take n to infinity, 
right? So we take the population size uh, to infinity, and let's also for, for uh, concreteness, and this will be sort of the case that is most relevant uh, in later discussions, the case that I have initially a single A individual, right? So the picture would be, I have a B population, and uh, at some point through a mutation, a single A individual appears, right? So this means N equal to one, right? Now you see when, when S is positive, then this thing uh, for N going to infinity, this thing simply disappears. And uh, this uh, term up here is left. And so basically what you get is that pi n, pi 1, for n going to infinity is equal to 1 minus 1 over 1 plus s, which is equal to s over 1 plus s. So this is a probability that a single uh, mutant in a, in a B population with an advantage s will survive. And you see that this has a good, good properties when s is small. Um, it becomes proportional to S. This is a very fundamental fact in, in, in uh, population genetics that, that, you know, because in practice, selection coefficients are typically small. So for these bacterial populations that I showed you, the, the values that people typically use are a couple of percent or maybe up to 0.1 or so, but these are typically small numbers. And so this means that, that if, a, if a mutant uh, with an advantage of 10%, appears in a population, and if the population is very large, with 90% probability it will go extinct, right? So that's sort of a, 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 um, the, the consequences of, of genetic drift. And the other important conclusion is that if S is negative, and you take N to infinity, So when S is negative, basically, you know, this factor becomes larger than that. So you basically mentally have to turn these two terms around. And, and uh, this will become very big. Uh, and so what happens is that the fixation probability goes to zero. Sorry? Uh, let's see, is that... Yeah, well, that's by definition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the way I defined it, you know, it's, it's so, so the, you know, right, yes. Um, right, if, if, uh, if uh, the A mutant is lethal, it would be minus one. That's right. Okay, so, so this is sort of, these are sort of important lessons. So this means essentially that, that mutations that give you a disadvantage will typically not fix in large populations and mutations that have an advantage will fix with a certain probability, okay? Okay, so this is a, 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 an important result uh, that I will um, make use of uh, 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 many times in the following. Um, is that clear so far? Um, okay, so what I want to do next is to, to introduce a kind of continuum picture which leads more or less to the same result, but which is sort of more, um, more versatile and in particular also applies to the Wright-Fisher model. And so this is the so-called diffusion approximation. And I should, yeah, I should actually say before I forget it, um, one thing that I wanted to point out to you uh, for this whole complex of things that I talked about yesterday and today, so the Wright-Fisher model, the Moran model, and the diffusion approximation, there's a nice review paper uh, or sort of introductory review written specifically for physicists by Richard Blythe and Alan McCain. Um, in the Journal of Statistical Mechanics. Um, in 2007. So this, this is, contains, I mean, unfortunately they mostly discuss the neutral case. So they are interested in, actually in, in language evolution and uh, 
uh, uh, use uh, wor work mostly with the uh, with the neutral case. So there isn't much about selection, but but uh, the other things are explained very nicely. Um, okay, so what what do we want to do? So so it's pretty clear, you know, from a physics point of view. Essentially, we have this state-dependent diffusion process on the integers between zero and n with, with these absorbing boundary conditions. So it's very natural to, to say, okay, we can go from, from this random walk description to a diffusion description. And the starting point would obviously be the, <clears throat> the master equation. And, and I'm going to do this here again for the Moran model. So we start from the master equation for the Moron model. Okay, so we just look at how the um, probability of being in state n evolves with time. And as usual, if you write down a master equation, you just have to you know, keep track of where uh, the probability is coming from and where it goes. So I'm interested in the probability of state n, okay? So I have to um, look at the processes that get me into state n. So this is going from state n plus 1 to state n, and this will happen if I'm previously in state n plus 1. And then there's another gain term from state n minus 1. And I have a loss term, which is basically um, containing all the rest. Okay, let me write it down. Um, which actually turns out to be simply this one. Yeah, I think I can write it like that. Okay, so this is the master equation for my process. <clears throat> um, and, and now if I'm, I'm going to do a continuum limit, okay? So for one thing, I want to do a continuum limit in time, which means that I replace this by something like um, a time derivative. And then I'm going to do a continuum limit in space, if you will, uh, which means that I replace my discrete variable by, dis by a continuous variable. So we want to do a continuum limit here. And so my new variable is just the frequency. In, in population genetics, these, these uh, fractions are always called frequencies. So there's no, you know, frequencies are not associated with any temporal process. So this is a frequency of, of A individuals. And uh, uh, so, so this will, of course, work if the changes in the frequency in one time step are small. And this will be the case if I take n to infinity. So then the change of delta of x in one time step will be 1 over n, and it will be very small. Right? So that's sort of the idea. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here I'm sort of using, I'm using, uh, maybe, okay, no, I think you, you might be right that this is actually not correct. Yeah, so I think, it, uh, yeah, I think this was, and they are not normalized. No, you're perfectly right. I'm sorry, I was sort of going a bit too fast here. Thank you, yes. So this is just the, the rest, basically, right? Okay. Yes, I think that uh, this would have spoiled my next point, so that's good. But, yeah. What is my T here? Uh, what? Well, it has to be just the rest, right? Ah, maybe not. Okay, yes, because I'm putting it, let's see.
Ah, yes, the one is gone. Okay, ah, sorry. <laughs> yes. Now it should be okay, yes? No, I'd say it has to be minus, no? Subject E of n. Mm -hmm. Then E of n t plus 1, where we are coming from n plus 1, n minus 1, and the same term is equal to e n n times E of n. <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Then if you plus E n n. Maybe I should do that, yeah. Now I'm totally confused. Uh, you think it's okay? Should we have a vote? <laughs> um, let me, okay, so let me sort of, I wanted, you know, let me sort of ignore this and let's try to do it properly, right? Uh, Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so let's just do, you know, the accounting, right? So this is equal to, um, I go from, I have an input term from n plus one. I have another input term from n minus one. Um, And I have an input term from staying where I am, right? Okay. And now I just subtract, right? So now I subtract minus, which of course I don't really have to do. And then I have to get, um, Yes. No, I think now it should be okay, yes? Okay. All right. <laughs> so you do the continuum limit. Again, I leave it as an exercise, right? <laughs> um, So in T, you don't really do much. I mean, you just replace this difference by, by a derivative and X. And so what, what this means is that you basically have to expand in powers of one over N, right? So you expand uh, the rates in, on the right-hand side. powers of 1 over n. And, and uh, it's easiest to do this first, to do this or maybe only in the neutral case. Um, so let's just assume for the moment s equal to 0. Okay, so what should you get? Um, so result. <clears throat> and so, so in the neutral case, there's a certain symmetry, which, which means that the leading order term that you end up getting on the right-hand side is actually of order 1 over n squared. So what you get is the following. So this is now my probability P of x and t. All right, so x is now the frequency. And you get this uh, diffusion equation where the state dependence of the diffusion coefficient is 
written here, okay? So this is what you get. And so you see you have a kind of a diffusion coefficient here, which is x times one minus x, and this is sort of what we, what we already saw when you have about equal number of A and B uh, uh, individuals, then the probability that you will pick two, two, two different ones in the reproduction step is higher. If almost everything is A, then you will not have a small chance of picking a B individual, and therefore um, the, the um, population will not change. Right? So this is the equation. <clears throat> um, and so, so here, and here one has again this time scale, right? So this is essentially uh, the, the time scale um, uh, for, for fixation, and you see that it is now n squared, and, that, and it's n, n squared because in the Moran model the step size is of order one and not of order square root of, of, um, uh, of um, uh, square root of n. Um, and so, um, in order to sort of get rid of that time scale, one likes to introduce a rescale time. Uh, so, so, so the typical fixation time is now is of order n squared, and we want to sort of eliminate that because we're anyway working in the n going to infinity limit. And so um, let's introduce a rescale time, which I call tau, and which for historical reasons has not just an n square in it, but also a factor of two. Okay, why is there this factor of two? Um, <clears throat> uh, well, this factor of two is there because you can basically do the same analysis for the Wright-Fisher model. So this is what I mentioned yesterday, that the, the Wright-Fisher model has the same diffusion approximation, and essentially, you know, a large class of models will have the same diffusion approximation. So in the Wright-Fisher model, um, the diffusion time is, is n, and the corresponding um, uh, time scale then is, um, is simply t over n, right? And so this factor of two is, uh, I think I mentioned this to someone yesterday, that this is sort of one of the factors of two in the population genetic, genetic, genetics literature that tends to cause confusion, which just comes out of the definition of these models. Okay, so this is now um, our equation. Uh, in principle, you could also use this now to study fixation. So one thing that you can easily do if you're, if you're sort of familiar with uh, Fokker-Planck type equations, you can try to find a stationary solution of this equation and you will discover that there is no stationary solution. And this is again reflecting the fact that you have these absorbing boundaries, okay? Now we can also introduce selection. So what happens if we introduce selection? So again, you can, you know, you can do this uh, expansion, including, uh, including the S. Uh, if you want to try that, um, you, you'll see in a moment that you have to assume, so along with these other limits, you also have to assume that S is small, okay? So you have to do a kind of joint limit uh, of s being small, and I'll, I'll show you in a moment why that is the case. So with selection, you find an equation which looks like this. So I, for now, I'm not, I haven't introduced the scale time yet. I'll do that in a moment. Let me write this in the, in the, in the normal time, just to sort of, so that you see what the difference is between selection and drift here. Um, so the second term is the same as before. I'm running out of space here. And so this is again sort of related to uh, to the structure of these rates. So what you see is that the, the selection term, so first of all, it's a first order term, right? So if you, I guess most of you have seen a Fokker-Planck equation. So, you know, this is a kind of Fokker-Planck equation and in, in sort of um, physics terminology, we would call this the diffusion term. 
and we would call this the drift term. So this is sort of physics. In population genetics, this is called selection. And this is called drift. Okay. Which can be a bit confusing in the beginning, but this is so, so you know, as I explained, drift is simply the, the noise that comes about from this stochastic sampling. But what I want to emphasize here is that these terms are of different order, right? So this is a one over n term, and this is a one over n squared term. And so that simply tells you that selection for large, you know, when, when, when n becomes big, selection will typically dominate over drift. I mean, this is just saying, and this is again something that you know from, from physics, this is just saying because n is, one over n is a noise strength, so when n is large, noise becomes less important and the process becomes deterministic, right? Um, now, but, but so in order to have a kind of, um, uh, um, uh, in order to have a, 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 a well-defined mathematical object in the limit of infinite n, we have to rescale things. So for one thing, we have to rescale time. But what you can see from this picture here is that we also have to rescale the selection coefficient. So what one typically does is to introduce a, a rescaled selection coefficient, which I call S tilde, um, and which is equal to, again, with a factor of one half that is introduced for convenience, but essentially it's proportional to S times N. So S times N is now the sort of effective selection coefficient, and the way I want to perform this limit is now to take N to infinity, S to zero, weak selection at S at fixed S tilde. And then I end up with an equation that sort of looks nice and doesn't contain an N anymore. So my final equation now uh, with the rescaled um, time is now this. Okay, so now one thing that we can do now, so this will still, you know, you can check that this still doesn't have any stationary solution, and of course it shouldn't because even with selection you will still have uh, absorption at the boundaries. Um, what we could do now is to calculate the fixation probability from this equation. So this is sort of related to the problem of calculating first passage uh, probabilities for Fokker-Planck equations. If you want to know about, I think I will have to postpone this to the tutorials because I want to get also to discussing mutations today. So if you want to know how that works, I can explain it in the afternoon, or maybe some of you already know it and can explain it to others. So the, you know, in a, in a very, in a nutshell, what you have to look at is the, so this is something, something that is called in Fokker-Planck terminology, the forward equation, because it's sort of 
propagates the probability in the forward direction. And in order to calculate the, the fixation probability, you have to look, the, look at the backward equation, which is sort of the adjoint of this uh, operator. And the result of that uh, is the following. So the fixation probability, so the fixation probability is obtained from the backward equation. And uh, I, I'll just write down the result because this is a formula that has almost iconic status. So I think it's probably the most reproduced result of mathematical population biology. And so this is now a function of x. Okay, so x is the, um, fraction, the initial fraction of, of type A. And the formula that you get is this. So this is 1 minus e to the minus s tilde times x divided by 1 minus e to the minus 2s tilde. And this is some, often called the Kimura formula. So this was derived by Kimura in 1962. And an easy exercise that you can do is to check that this expression reduces to that in the appropriate limit. Okay, so exercise. Derive this from um, from the Boron model result. But it has a sort of same general feature. So if you if you sort of recall that S tilde is actually S times N, then you can see that in the large and limit, uh, it has uh, essentially the same properties as, obviously, as uh, the, the Moran fixation probability, which I discussed here. Okay? Yes. I mean, everything, you know, fixation probability per se is a T going to infinity property, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me, let me uh, in the last half hour, let me uh, say something about how to introduce mutations. Um, and this is actually, yeah. Ah. Yes. Yes, I mean, so basically, I mean, the, the up, uh, and basically, um, you know, what you have to do, you look at the backward equation, and then the, this pi of x is an eigenfunction of the backward equation with the appropriate boundary conditions. Right, I mean, it's, yeah, you could say it's a stationary distribution, yes. But it's a stationary distribution of the backward equation. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's uh, um, look a little bit at mutations. Um, okay, so this is now five. Let's look at mutations. Um, so, and we're still going to consider this this two type model. So we consider that uh, you know there can be uh, spontaneous mutations changing a into b or changing changing b into a. And let's assume for generality that these can occur at different rates, okay? So let me call these rates u and v, okay? Now what happens, and, and to see what, you know, how we have to modify uh, the diffusion equation, let's just think about what happens on the, on the level of, of a rate equation, right? So let's just write down a rate equation for x. So x is my is a fraction of, of A individuals, right? So if, if, if I have these mutations, what will happen? Well, if I just look at the change due to mutations, um, on the one hand, I will be um, 
uh, creating A types from B. So this happens at rate V times a fraction of B individuals, which is 1 minus X. And I will be losing A individuals at rate U proportional to the, num to the fraction of A individuals. Right? So this is basically the changes due to mutations uh, that I expect simply from, from mutations, right? So x, remember that x is equal to the fraction of, of uh, A individuals, okay? Which, which um, okay, so that's, that's what we have, right? So, so now, uh, in order to, to um, modify um, my um, uh, uh, diffusion equation, on the level of the diffusion equation, this is something like, again, in sort of physical terminology, this will contribute to the drift term, right? Because this is a sort of deterministic change of the mutation frequencies due to, uh, of the gene frequencies due to mutations. So basically, we just have to take this thing, we have to take this term and, and include it into the diffusion equation, right? Um, so this has to be included. Include this into the drift term. So drift here meaning um, of the Fokker-Planck equation. And uh, if, you, if you do the calculation, you find that this will again give you a contribution that is of the same order as a selection term. So it's of the same order in N. Okay, same order as a selection term. And so if you, if you do the rescaling, the equation that you get, again, in rescale time, will now look like this. So we have the selection term, S tilde times X times 1 minus X. And then we have um, the, the mutation term, which is essentially just what I've written down there. So this we can write as a V tilde times 1 minus X um, plus U tilde, or my, I guess, uh, let's see, I think it should be minus U tilde probably, yes. Minus U tilde times X. So it's a linear contribution to the drift term. And then we have the diffusion term, which is still there, right? Where these rescaled quantities are just as before, are the, the, the sort of bare mutation rates multiplied by n. Yes, sure, yeah, thank you. Right. Probably there has to be a factor of two. If, I, if we work with moron, there has to be a factor of two. So presumably this is something like u times n and v tilde is one half. Times n. Okay, so this is now, um, uh, the um, uh, uh, equation including diffusion, uh, including mutations. And this will now, so, so again, you know, this is something uh, for you to, to, to look at if you want, uh, you know. So, so uh, does everybody know how to determine the stationary solution of a Fokker-Planck equation? Basically, you have to look for a solution that makes the right-hand side 
to be equal to zero, you have these two derivatives, so you can pull out the derivatives. Then the rest that is there is essentially a current, and you put that current into zero, right? So that gives you an ordinary differential equation for P, right? And so if you do that now here, you will see that this actually now has a stationary solution. So what these mutations do, and, and you know, physically or, or you know, mathematically, obviously this is what has to happen because as soon as you have mutations, as soon as you can go from A to B or from B to A spontaneously, you don't have these absorbing states anymore, right? So the absorbing states disappear. So this means that the equation has a nice stationary solution. And uh, uh, this uh, stationary solution looks uh, like this, so it's not very difficult to derive it. Um, up to the normalization. So this is now a, a, a function on the interval. So remember that x is, lives on the interval 0, 1. And uh, the stationary solution looks like the, uh, as follows. So there's an exponential term which describes selection. So this tells you that, so for example, when s is positive, then large values of x will be favored. And then there is a, uh, there are two terms that come from um, the mutation. And they look like this, okay? So this is, this is the stationary solution. Um, and so these are particularly interesting. So if you sort of uh, look at these terms, you see that there are basically two cases. So let's, for simplicity, let's consider the symmetric case. So let's say u tilde is equal to v tilde. So we have symmetric mutations. And so you see then that there are sort of two cases. Um, So x lives on the interval between 0 and 1. And you see when, when this rescaled mutation rate is smaller than 1 half, then the exponents here become negative, which means that the stationary distribution diverges at the boundaries, right? So it will look something like this. It's, it's stationary because the divergence is integrable, right? This exponent is always slightly bigger than minus one, so you can integrate over it. So it's still normalizable, but it has these peaks, okay? So this is basically when, when u tilde and v tilde are smaller than one half. And so this means, and I think I, I mentioned this already yesterday in the tutorial, this means that typically if you observe the process, typically you will have mostly A individuals or you have mostly B individuals. So you have you're looking at something that almost looks like fixation, right? So, so, so you're, although in principle over long times you can sort of switch between these two peaks, at any given time, most of the time you'll see um, uh, this. So you will have low diversity essentially. Whereas on the other hand, if, uh, if um, the mutation rates are bigger, and bigger here always meaning relative to one over n, right? So you see that the relevant scale for mutation rates is one over n, just like the relevant scale for the selection coefficient is one over n. Um, and so here now this x, these exponents become positive, and so the distribution will actually vanish at the boundaries, right? Okay, so here you have sort of high diversity. Your, your population will essentially be a mixture of A and B, and here you have low diversity. Although in the presence of mutations, of course, you will always have some diversity. Um, well, you know, what, what you can see here from this dynamics, so, so the, you know, dynamically what this x times 1 minus x means is that the process gets very slow when it approaches the boundaries, right? So basically it gets stuck near the boundaries. If, it, if, you, if you get 
close to x equal to 1 or x equal to 0, the diffusion is almost turned off. Right, so you tend to stay there. So, so you can think about this as, as, as a kind of, you know, it's a kind of random walk, but with sticky boundaries, if you will. Right? So, 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 and, and the, mutations, the mutations sort of randomize everything, so the mutations tend to drive you away. Uh, but, but if the mutations are weak, then you still see that you're mostly stuck at the boundaries. And of course, it also, you know, by continuity, if you take u and v to zero, then you go back to the situation where you don't have any normalizable state, steady state. So then you re recover the absorbing states. But the main thing is really this, this slowing down near the boundaries. Yeah, there will be some point where this is essentially flat, right? So. So when v tilde and u tilde are exactly one half, then it's a flat distribution, yes. But then it will also be modified by selection, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you see it's no longer normalizable, right? If you take these to zero, then you have a non-integrable divergence at zero. So you, this is, you know, you, formally it exists, but it, it's not normalizable. So in that sense, it's not a, not a proper stationary distribution. That's the problem. That, that's how, you, how it sort of signaled that there is something happening, right? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, this, you know, this term doesn't, I mean, it will just skew things, right? So selection will just basically push you a little bit like this. I mean, it will sort of tend to make things a bit bigger on the right-hand side, right? Okay. I mean, if there are no more questions, maybe I could still use the last... 10 minutes to explain how to derive the Kimura formula. Should I do that? Give you the, the derivation. Maybe, you know, just for completeness, because then... Um, okay, so let's see. So what do we want to... I guess we need a sense. Yeah, we just need that blackboard. Okay, so if you just want to know where this formula comes from, uh, you can just, um, you know believe what I said, which is that um, pi of x is, um, a station, or is a stationary solution, or I probably, I, I want to, okay, I want to formulate a little bit differently. I want to say pi of x is, um, is an eigenfunction. Of the of the evolution operator um, of the backwards equation okay so the evolution operator of the forward equation is essentially uh, written here right so this the, the right hand side of this thing, uh, I can call, so this is an operator L acting on P, right? And then the evolution operator of the backwards equation is the adjoint of that. Um, So let me call this L star. And so, you know, you, you know adjoints from quantum mechanics, so basically you just have to, you know, mentally do a kind of uh, um, partial integration and move the, the, the derivatives over to the other side. For a second order derivative, uh, this doesn't change anything, but for the first order derivative, it will change the sign, and in particular, it will bring these factors in front of the differential operator. That's sort of the main thing. So the backwards 
uh, operator looks like this. So we have S tilde x times 1 minus x times d by dx, right? So I've changed the order of these operators and I've changed the sign. And the second order term is uh, 1 half x times 1 minus x times d2 by dx squared, right? And so, um, and this is basically analogous, this is sort of the analog of the recursion that I wrote down for you for the Moron model, right? So this is the analog um, of the recursion um, for pi n that we, that we derived for the Moron model. And so basically what we want to, we want to find a solution with a property that L star uh, and of this function pi of x is equal to zero. Um, and you see again, just like for the Moran model, that of, of course a constant would do, right? So any constant will be a solution of this. But again, the constant doesn't satisfy the boundary conditions. So we need to satisfy the boundary conditions that pi of zero is equal to zero and pi of x, pi of one is equal to one. And so then this becomes rather simple. So we just have to, and we can pull out this uh, x times one minus x term. So the equation that we have to solve is the following. Um, S tilde d by dx plus one half d2 by dx squared um, applied to pi is equal to zero. This x times one minus x factor, of course, doesn't matter. Um, and so then you just have to basically, you know, so you have a simple um, uh, 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 linear differential equation. And, and you just have to, this term you simply get from the normalization. I mean, from the boundary conditions you get this, right? So that's, this is basically uh, what you will, will obtain, right? So this gives you the Kimura formula. And so I think that the best way of understanding why this is the right thing to do is to, you know, really to, to refer to the analogy with this discrete Moran process where the, 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 if you will, the evolution matrix that enters this recursion is also exactly the adjoint of the time evolution uh, uh, matrix of the process. So you said that uh, the already question doesn't have Right. Is about, uh, no, no, it's, it, that's not, the, I mean, no, no, I think that's, I mean, you know, you can, you can try to, um, yeah, maybe, you know, so as I said, if you want a stationary solution of this equation, you, you can pull out the, the um, you can pull out the, uh, uh, one of the derivatives, and then you get basically uh, a, a current, right, so th for the forward equation, um, what you want is that, uh, the, 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 the current, which is S tilde times X times one minus X um, times P minus one half D by DX, X times one minus X times P. And let me call this P star, right? So we're looking for a, for a stationary solution of the forward equation, and I want this to be equal to zero, right? So now what, what can we, um, so how can we solve this? So, for, so we could, we, we say this, we can call this a function Q. So let me call this Q of X, right? And so then uh, uh, the equation that I have to solve is simply one half D by DX Q of X is equal to um, S tilde times Q of X. Right, and so Q of X 
is equal to, you know, there will be some integration constant, but essentially it will be equal to e to the 2s tilde uh, times x, right? This is where you see this e to the 2s tilde x coming in. But then the, the p star is essentially e to the 2s tilde x divided by x times 1 minus x, right? So basically you get the same thing as over here in the absence of diffusion. Uh, but this is not normalizable. And this is where you see that you have a problem. So you don't really, you know, you don't, it's not about boundary conditions, but you just see that, that this thing is not normalizable, right? So therefore it's not a good stationary solution. Okay, so I think then um, I'm out of time. So, so tomorrow I'll then start talking about, you know, so now, now we've, uh, we've only looked at essentially two types and single mutations, but, but an important theme here is that, of course, in general, you'll have many mutations and they will, <coughs> they will interact in certain ways. And this leads to the uh, concept of fitness landscapes that also has a lot of commonalities with, uh, uh, with statistical physics and that I want to talk about in the next one or two lectures. So we'll continue there tomorrow. Thank you.